Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do. It's going to be a chatty get ready with me. I'm gonna share with you how I got this look here. I'm using a new eyeshadow palette from Juvia's Place and some new products to me from Koki Cosmetics. I am also going to be taking on the beauty consumer tag. It has been really requested that I take on this tag video. Uh, I will go ahead and link 90s Love Child. She's the one who started this tag. I will also link some of my friends that I've seen do this tag video because a lot of people have done it. I find it to be a pretty personal tag, so get ready because I definitely have a lot to say in this video, but it's been really interesting to see all of the different answers that people have to these questions. So again, check my description box for more videos on this tag. Before we jump into the get ready with me, I do want to say that I have a sponsor on today's video, which always has me really excited. So thank you so much to HelloFresh for working with me on this video. So if you haven't yet heard of HelloFresh, it is a meal delivery service. So we are a really big fan of them, especially Especially since we've moved to a small town we don't have as many options anymore when it comes to food and it's not always a bad thing because we're definitely making more meals at home but sometimes Mitch and I kind of get stuck and we do the same meals over and over and then we get bored of it and then we turn to fast food because that's what we have the most here and that's not good not only is it expensive but it's not great for you either so we really like getting the HelloFresh boxes because they offer a more variety when you sign up on the HelloFresh website you can choose uh, what type of meals that you like. They have a bunch of different dietary options in there for you. You can pick some of your favorite meals that you would like to see and then you get an option from 22 different meals to choose from. You can pick how many meals you want delivered a week, how many servings that you want. There's extras that you can add on with your boxes and then to me the best part is that all the ingredients and the recipe cards get shipped right to your door which is fantastic because another tough thing that I have found really challenging when it comes to making meals at home especially for only two people is that sometimes when I'm making a recipe I don't need or maybe you only need a one cup or a teaspoon of an ingredient but in order to buy it at the grocery store you have to buy a whole bag of it or a whole bottle of something when you really don't need that much and then it's just kind of wasteful not only money wise but then you have a product just sitting around too so I really enjoy that not only are you getting all the ingredients shipped right to your door but also that you are having um, that exact amount of the ingredients that you need delivered to you so I think that's a pretty amazing thing I will have the HelloFresh website linked to my description box they did also give me a discount code for their New Year's uh, special that they are running now which is 10 free meals off of your first month so the code is Samantha March 10 again I'll have the link in the code in my description box but if you'd be interested in signing up for the website and getting those 10 free meals with your first month's purchase I will have all that information in my description box again this is something that Mitch and I just really enjoy doing I love sharing my food photos on like my Instagram stories and on my Twitter especially because I'm not much of a domestic goddess I call myself an undomestic goddess so having the recipe cards and everything really laid out simply for me and the photos in there I can actually make these meals and I'll have some clips inserted of Mitch and I you know together in the kitchen and and working together to create these dinners but it's a lot of fun to be able to do that with him uh, and then to create something that I'm proud of because I'm not always the best in the kitchen but I, I have a confidence when I am doing these meals from HelloFresh so again be sure to check my description box thank you so much to HelloFresh for working with me on this video thank you guys so much for your continued support and rooting me on when it comes to being in the kitchen I very much appreciate it but if you would like to see how I got this look and hear my answers to the beauty consumer tag why don't we go ahead and get started hello okay I'm gonna start on the eyes again this week because I'm using this new palette from Juvia's place this is the violets palette so we have a six pan purple palette which I'm really excited about I love purple especially with green eyes uh, so this palette immediately called to me so this is what I'm going to be using and since I'm I'm going to use some darker colors like this darker purple is really beautiful and I'm going to use some shimmers not sure how the fallout will be or if I'll need to like clean up around the um, like the outer part of my eye and all that so I'm just going to go ahead and do the eyes first before jumping into foundation I'm going to use the Urban Decay Primer Potion 
So Juvia's Place just released four of these mini palettes or on-the-go palettes. Uh, the Violets was the one that called to me the most. I talked about this in a Will I Buy It video and how I said I was most interested in this palette. Juvia's Place did send me uh, all four of them, which I was really excited for. But again, I knew the first one that I wanted to try was going to be the Violets palette right here. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do some quick swatches on my hand here so we can kind of see the different shades that we're working with. There's a mixture of matte and shimmers in the six pan palette and these run for $13.99. So here are the six swatches. I think the shimmers all swatched so beautifully, especially this one here is such a cool color. I think I want to use that one for sure. The two mattes didn't, like, didn't swatch as well. This one was a little bit hard to show up and this one kind of just looks a little bit patchy. Juvia's Place, I like their eyeshadow formula and I've purchased palettes from them myself too. I wouldn't say they have my favorite formula overall. Um, I feel like, especially with their mattes, they're one of those formulas that you kind of have to build up a little bit, which I don't mind. I don't mind building up instead of something that's overly pigmented. But sometimes with Juvia's Place, I feel like there's times where you have to build up quite a bit. So we'll see if that's what happens with the mattes. But again, these shimmers are beautiful. I'm first going to pick up, um, this is a Sigma brush, the E35, and I'm going to pick up this light matte shade, and let's just jump into that and see what we get on the eyes, because, you know, you can swatch things, but until you really try them on the eyes, that's when you know for sure. And then I'm just going to go ahead and blend into my crease and all along the outer part of my eye, kind of bringing this in halfway to. Okay, so this is my, that first pass with that shade. And actually, I don't feel like that's too bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and build it up just a little bit more here. I really like this kind of light violet. And it appears to be blending easily too, so... Not bad. To hop into the questions for the beauty consumer tag. So the first question is, how much do you spend on makeup a month and also a year? So I have made a change for 2020. So because this is YouTube is what I do as an income, I do earn an income from it. I can write off certain items. Uh, so because I'm fully self-employed and I have been for several years now, even before I did YouTube, um, I'm able to write off a part of my mortgage. I'm able to write off a part of my internet bill and my cell phone bill and all of that. Also, when it comes to YouTube, there are certain write-offs that you can do, um, you know, computers and cameras and lights, like all your equipment and everything. Um, but you can also write off a portion of your makeup so I uh, like track my purchases that way but what I had been doing before was just kind of like looping in my makeup with my like supplies category so if I purchased like envelopes tape you know just like like office supplies I was putting my makeup into that category um, but what I started to do for 2020 is I keep my own write-off sheets myself and then I have an accountant who, um, you know, goes through everything at tax time and all of that. But I like to keep my spreadsheets for myself just to kind of get an idea of what's going on or if I have, like, I don't know, just ever have questions on anything. I just like having things for myself. So uh, what I did when I was making my 2020 spreadsheets is I have a separate column now just for like makeup and beauty supplies that I'm doing instead of looping them in with the other office supplies. Um, and that's going to be for me to have an idea of how much I'm spending on makeup and when I need to pull it back because um, I've been pretty frank towards the end of 2019 of having some real talks in my videos of how much money I was spending on not only makeup but like my YouTube channel in general compared to how much money I was bringing in and how much debt that put me in <laughs> because just because someone makes YouTube videos doesn't make us millionaires. Um, sometimes I feel like sometimes I feel like there's this idea because I feel like I've fallen into it too that if you make beauty videos on YouTube, you have like a surplus of money to spend on makeup when that's just not true. And um, you know, I definitely caused a lot of stress on myself and 
my family and marriage and all of that when I was just like bye bye buying makeup and like oh but I need this for a video oh I need this for reviews oh people tell me I need to buy more oh, oh people tell me my channel's boring because I don't show enough new makeup like I'm I'm over that mindset <laughs> I'm over that I there's so many things in life that I want to do and there's so many things that I can't do because I'm still trying to get myself out of debt from all of the makeup that I have accumulated from starting a YouTube channel that's now you know sitting in piles around my office creating dust um so that's not great that doesn't make me feel good about myself so that's what I started for 2020 I mean if I did this video next year I'd be able to have like a solid number to put on there but I mean I, I, I've spent thousands of dollars in a year on makeup. I'm Rouge at Sephora. Um, I'm a, I'm not the diamond member, but I'm the platinum member at Ulta Beauty, but I'm almost to the diamond level. So that gives you an idea of how much I spend just at Sephora and Ulta. But that's something that I really am working on going forward is not just buying to buy, not just buying even when I know I can't afford it. Uh, and just doing it anyways, like that's not smart, <laughs> that's not responsible, and uh, I'm not gonna do that anymore. So, there we go. Okay, so I also am gonna come into this deeper matte shade. I'm gonna take the Sigma E25, and I'm going to put this on the outer part of my eye, and we'll just see how this one goes. Hopefully it blends okay. that looks too bad no sometimes with darker colors they can be a little bit patchy or a little bit I don't know harder to blend and again with the way it swatched I was like I don't know we'll have to see but I don't think that's bad at all so I'm just going to take my time and blend it into the crease in that lighter shade and bring it out here and I'm, I'm, I'm okay to be a little bit messy out here because I haven't done my foundation or concealer so I can use those products to kind of clean up anything on the outer part of the eye here too okay so question number two is do you ever feel guilty about how much you spend on makeup and yeah for sure and when I went through the times of like buying even when I knew I shouldn't buy makeup even when I knew I couldn't afford it even when you know and all of that I definitely felt very guilty in those times I've made videos um, I referenced this in the first question but I forgot to say that I've made mindset and makeup videos I will link them down below and the first video is where I really explained how I kind of got into this mindset of I need to constantly be buying makeup on YouTube I need to constantly be showing new stuff um, and also kind of the toll it took on me and the toll it took in my personal life too. Uh, I do have that video on YouTube. So again, I'll link that series down below and those videos in my description box if you'd be curious or if you'd want to hear more. Um, because it just, it, I mean, it sucked. It was a hard time and I like I have to take responsibility for that for sure. And I have and I do. But it's it can get hard when you put yourself on, on the internet and you're trying to do this this thing and then you see everyone it feels like everyone around you is constantly having these huge hauls and constantly showing all this new makeup and it makes you feel less than and you're trying to keep up with the joneses but you don't actually realize who the joneses are you don't realize that some of these youtubers have been you know maybe doing this for years are maybe best friends with certain brands are on a zillion pr list um, you might not realize that some of these people that do YouTube are actually also very wealthy in their real life from their career, um, from the family that they were born into, from the people that they've married to the decisions that they've made that have uh, helped them to acquire this wealth. So it doesn't seem as big of a deal when they're doing their huge hauls because they are able to do that. There's someone like me who doesn't come from that and has really had a struggle most of my life to just kind of stay afloat and I don't realize what I'm going up against. I don't realize the background of everybody that I'm watching and I just think, gosh, everyone on YouTube who has a beauty channel has a ton of makeup, is reviewing a ton of makeup, is hauling a ton of makeup. Like, that's what I need to do to be successful. And then pair that with the comments I'm getting of like, you're so boring, how come you don't show new things? You're never gonna be like so-and-so uh, because she always has new releases every single week. And it makes, again, it made 
me feel less than and because I didn't have the greatest self-confidence at that time and I'm someone who's a people pleaser I let myself fall into this trap of you know buying all this new makeup and you know definitely I, I feel very guilty over a lot of my purchases I still feel guilt now because I'm still trying to work myself out of debt while still trying to be successful doing this and it is it's hard and then i'm going to take my sigma f70 and i'm going to grab out this really beautiful shimmer shade i'm going to use a dry brush first and see how it goes but i'm just going to place this on oh, that looks really beautiful i'm going to place this on the inner part wow oh, that is so pretty that definitely doesn't i don't feel like that even needs a shimmer or a a shimmer it doesn't need a setting spray it doesn't need a damp brush and that looks beautiful Ooh. and really not even getting a lot of fallout like sometimes I like to use a damp brush because it helps with the amount of fallout that I get but wow this is really beautiful I'm really impressed that shimmer shade is just so like electric popping Ooh. Question number three is, do you get FOMO related to makeup releases? Yes, definitely. So, I mean, for sure I do. And, um, you know, I've definitely caved to FOMO time and again. Um, I do a series on my channel called the Will I Buy It series. I started it about, I think it was like three years ago. This one hair is bothering me. But um, I started it about three years ago. And it was kind of like my response to wanting to talk about new makeup on my channel. But knowing I couldn't afford it. And knowing that I wasn't on a ton of PR lists. Um, so I wasn't getting the new releases in. And the anti-haul videos that were started by Kimberly Clark were were up and you know were a thing and I tried doing a couple of those but I didn't really love them even though they got a ton of views because I feel like with Kimberly Clark I feel like kind of her starting the anti-haul was about consumerism and not having to buy everything and not you know and all of that and I feel like slowly over time the anti-hauls kind of turned into really negative videos and almost like almost kind of like brand bashing videos and I I like I found myself falling into that trap too like I took anti hauls as a as a way to have like a really nasty looking thumbnail with like you know the warning sign or X's on on my thumbnail too and I was like you know what I don't really want to do this because it doesn't really feel like me and even though those videos did well and brought in views and subscribers I just didn't like doing them because I didn't like that it kind of like it gave me a negative energy on the days that I was filming them and that's not what I wanted and I was like but I don't know you know like like what's something different that I can do so that's why I started the will I buy it as a way to still talk about new releases but not just talk about the all the ones that I don't like or don't want to buy or I'm boycotting or anything like that it was like let's just talk about the new makeup what's out there because you know, and a lot of times too, I'd get asked questions like, oh, this brand's coming out with this palette. What do you think of it? Well, let's put it into a video and let's just talk about it. And it's been really exciting to see the series kind of go off and become its own thing. And um, that's very exciting for me. And I I like it. I like to watch Will I Buy It's more than I do just like straight anti hauls or something um because i just like kind of having a discussion and yeah maybe what catches your attention and you really want but you know that you shouldn't afford it or you don't really need it or you can dupe it or and it's just kind of interesting to me and i started the community playlist so any creator who makes that style can add it to the playlist so if there's you know a day that you just want to binge watch videos you can pull up the community playlist and see a bunch of different people and it's because i find it fascinating like I'm not someone who I who feels like my opinion is the only one that matters or is the only one that's right. It's fun for me to for me to be like, I don't really like this palette because of this and this and watch someone else's video and have them freak out over how excited they are over that same palette. I just think that it's fun and I think it's interesting and um, I really enjoy it. But I'm pretty sure I've made a video in the past called my like makeup FOMO wish list. <laughs> if I can find it, I will link it. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Because I remember having a couple people comment on it being like, what's FOMO? <laughs> Which is fear of missing out. <laughs> so far with the eyes, like, so far so good. I'll clean everything up as we do complexion and everything and then finish off the lower lash line. But 
so far I'm really impressed with the Juvia's Blaze palette like that was that was really easy to do uh, so I have a few new products from Koki Cosmetics. I'm really excited to try this brand. I have their Skin Perfect HD Foundation and also their Be Bright Illuminating Concealer. My friend Kelly Gooch really loves this brand and I had put them in my brands that I want to try in 2020. It's a series I started back in 2017 where I did seven brands I want to try in 2017. I did eight brands in 2018 and nine brands in 2019. I didn't really want to do 20 brands because... Uh, that just seemed like a lot. Uh, I didn't really do the best in my 9 in 2019 video, but also I didn't want to do so many brands and kind of put this pressure on myself to try all these other ones because I didn't want it to promote irresponsible spending on my behalf. Because again, this is something I've been open about on YouTube is spending too much money on makeup. I decided to do it in a different format and I did top five, bottom five. So um, 10 brands that you know I want to try or I'm interested in, but five that I really think that I'm going to try that I'm really most interested in and five that I probably am not going to be trying in 2020 and list it my different reasons. So I'll link that one. But I mentioned Koki Cosmetics and I did say that they had sent me a PR package before I made that video, which I was very excited for. Cause again, because of Kelly, like that's why Koki Cosmetics has been on my radar. So I was really, really excited that they had sent this to me. So I said I was going to be trying Koki and I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. So uh, first up, I'm gonna prime my skin using the Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. I think this is a really nice primer and it works well with a lot of foundations. And the Koki foundation is supposed to be a, uh, it says a mid coverage natural finish foundation. Uh, but I think on the website, I think it said that it leans more of like a natural matte finish. So I just wanna make sure my skin is nice and hydrated so on the website this is $13 also it does come in a glass bottle and has a pump on it so this provides medium to full coverage that finishes into a natural looking semi matte okay so let's expect long lasting non cakey comfortable wear alrighty so I'm just going to use my Ofer sponge got a fresh Ofer sponge this is one of my favorite tools for applying makeup and I'm just going to do a couple pumps here and the shade that they sent me was 20W, which why didn't I look at that first? I probably should have. So I'm assuming W means like warm and I'm usually more neutral or cool. So this might not be the best shade match on me, but we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and give it a try and see what we can do here. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend this in. So for foundations, I usually like... A medium buildable and I like something that's more of a natural finish um, even sometimes like natural luminous natural satin I'm not a big matte girl go ahead and see what I think because it did you know kind of put emphasis on this being more of a natural finish I do have a, quite a few breakouts on my skin right now and I feel like if I get close I feel like you can definitely still see everything that I have going on on my skin it didn't um it didn't cover up a bunch so i'm gonna go ahead and do another layer of the foundation and see if we can cover up some of this redness a little bit more but that is one layer so far i'm just gonna do a little bit more and really kind of focus it on the lower half of my face which has the most breakouts for sure and see if we can just cover a little bit more so i feel like the second layer definitely helped you can still see my skin and some of my breakouts but they're not quite as prominent as they were before I tell from the first pass that it is more matte i'm trying to get like close to the camera so you can see have you guys tried this foundation or anything from koki cosmetics do let me know but I can, yeah i can definitely feel that it's more of a matte finish i'll have to see what i think about it throughout the day and um i'll try to leave a pinned comment letting you know what i think because i'm planning to keep this makeup on all day so i'll let you know kind of how it wore and my thoughts on it so you can check to that uh check that pinned comment i don't know if i'm like overly obsessed with it off the bat i think probably because it's a little bit more matte so maybe once i get the rest of my makeup on i'll be able to to get an idea a little bit more but i feel like kind of around my nose looks a little looks a little bit cakey and I 
um, you know, the coverage, I, I wish I could cover some of these breakouts a little bit more, but that's an idea of it. And it's my first time trying the foundation, so I'll play with it a few different ways too and um, different primers and all of that. But I'm going to go ahead and keep going and I'm going to move over to the Be Bright Illuminating Concealer. I know Kelly really loves this concealer too. So I got the shade Light on this one. And I know she said this is uh, really similar to the First Aid Beauty Bendy Avocado Concealer, which I do like. So you just have a small doe foot here and, ooh, that is really light. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna add just a little bit there to the inner part of my eyes. And it feels very lightweight right off the bat. Um, that might be too much, but we'll see. We'll blend it out here. Uh, it feels really lightweight and very, like it feels more hydrating, a little bit more liquidy, like a, just a thinner consistency. I know she said this doesn't have like the highest coverage, which I tend to prefer something a little bit more high coverage for my concealers, but we will see. And again, I'm just going to kind of use my sponge to kind of come out and clean up that uh, shadow too. It is so light. I don't want to place it on the areas where I'm broken out and want a little bit more coverage um, because again, just because it's so light, I don't want it to emphasize the breakouts. So I might grab another concealer that's more uh, skin cover, skin, skin, what am I trying to say? More of my, my skin tone. I was gonna say skin coverage, what does that even mean? So I feel like it blended out really easily. Again, kind of has that thinner consistency, a little bit more hydrating. I can tell that it's not full coverage, which again, I knew that it wasn't going to be, but I still think it looks pretty decent on my under eyes. Again, I don't know if I'm totally obsessed with it or it might be the foundation that's throwing me off right now, but is the Be Bright Concealer. It actually to me almost looks a little bit more matte on the under eyes too, not quite as illuminating as maybe I thought it would be with the name. I'm gonna use a little bit of the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Concealer, Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer in the shade 40N. And I'm gonna use this on some of these areas that I wanna conceal. I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury powder and set everything. Okay, I did my brows off camera. I'm just going to go ahead and keep going for my complexion products. I don't have new things, so I'm just going to go ahead and focus on these questions once again. Okay, so number four was, do you purchase or keep items simply because they are limited edition? A lot of times I don't purchase items that are limited edition, like and I felt like this for a long time. When I watch other YouTube videos, especially like the Will I Buy It series, a lot of people seem very drawn in by limited edition and seem to want to purchase because of limited edition. And I actually have the opposite effect. When I see limited edition, I'm like, oh, you know, it doesn't really make me that excited. But if I do have something or I have purchased something that is limited edition and you know now it's no longer available, I have a harder time getting rid of it. Number five is, would you be willing to pay more money for a sold out product online? I don't think so. I've, I've never done this. Always searching for the best deals. I'm always searching for coupons. I almost never, like there's so many things on my Sephora cart right now, but I'm refusing to, to buy them because I want like 8% cash back on Ebates or I want a sale or I want a gift card or I want, I want some, like I, I don't like paying full price for products and I'm always trying to find some sort of discount or deal. I'm gonna use my number seven caramel bronzer. I haven't used this in so long, but I saw my friend Makeup Molly share it the other day. I think it was on her Instagram and she had hit pan in it and it really inspired me to pull out to this bronzer once again. I, I just haven't used it in such a long time. Uh, but number six is do you wish you could spend more or less I mean I this is kind of a tough question on one end I wish I was able to spend more I wish I was able to have a sort of freedom that comes with having money um, I've you know I've kind of wished that my whole life this is a very personal tag <laughs> Woo. because of my circumstances you know growing up and just certain things that have happened in life i sometimes i feel like i look around and i see other people and i see everything that they have and everything that they're able to do because of money money does not buy you happiness but it does give you a certain level of freedom and security 
that that is what I envy in other people. So on one hand, I want to say like, I wish I was able to spend more because I wish I didn't have to scrutinize every single purchase that I've made. I wish I was able to spend more in the sense of not just getting material things, but of having a little bit more freedom and not feeling so held back. But on the other hand, if I'm being like realistic with myself, um, and if we're talking about, you know, this is the beauty consumer tag, sorry, I know I'm taking it a little bit deeper than just that, but that's just, you know, I try to impart some sort of wisdom in my videos or share stories of lessons that I've, you know, learned along the way and hopefully it'll help someone else one day. But, um, just thinking about makeup like I wish I was able to spend less on makeup and I I wish that there wasn't this idea that youtubers constantly need to show new makeup I get comments every single week on my will I buy it that I don't buy enough makeup to make some other person who just happens to be watching my videos happy even if I'm buying what makes me happy I'm buying what I'm most interested in and I'm not spending my money on purchases that I don't want or I don't need or eventually will just become wasteful in my collection that's not good enough to some people which is very strange to me but I try to really focus on the comments of the people saying, thanks for not buying everything. Thanks for not also then continuing the cycle of making other people feel like they need to buy everything or giving other people FOMO. So that's what I try to focus on. I like to watch a lot of Project Pan and Shop My Sash videos. I like doing those series myself because at the end of the day, even though I love what I do and I started this YouTube channel because I enjoy makeup and I liked to be able to talk about it. It was fun to be able to find another outlet to connect with people on the internet. I was already, you know, working full time for myself and from home and it was this really nice outlet. Truly, really, I no longer feel an obsession with just only wanting to buy to buy makeup, to buy to please other people, to buy to hopefully have views. I've learned a lot about myself through my time on YouTube and I've been able to kind of get a clear path for myself and what it is that I want and I don't want to encourage other people to be irresponsible I and I'm not saying people and because because of course I, I can already see the comments coming in however other people decide to run their channels is their business and if they want to show the new releases then that's great and if that's a lifestyle that they can do then that's great but I have to stop pretending that that is also my lifestyle because I was trying for a while I was a fraud I was trying to pretend that I could do that and all that cost me was intense unhappiness and a huge amount of debt and a personal life that I no longer felt happy with because I couldn't do anything anymore with friends or my husband or with family because of all I had to show for it was piles of makeup. So I just don't want to do that anymore. But again, I'm not trying to put down other people who have different views than me because even people that have beauty channels, they run them completely differently than me. Whether it's buying new makeup, whether it's focusing on consumerism, I think Hannah Louise Poston has such a fantastic YouTube channel and she came onto YouTube doing a no buy year. Magical. I love, and I talked about this once in my podcast, I have a podcast called Start Inspired, if you're interested. Um, a new season two kicked off yesterday. New episodes go live every Thursday morning and season two started yesterday, which I'm very excited about. But I love seeing a different landscape on YouTube because again, when I started four or five years ago now, it was all about the new. That was how you got views. That was how you brought in subscribers, was showing the new, hauling the new, tutorials with the new. That is how you found success. I love that there is more diversity on YouTube right now. I love that it's not all of the people who look the same that are succeeding. I love that it's not only about new makeup that's succeeding. I love that there's channels that focus on shopping their stash and using up their makeup or really thinking, tracking all of their purchases, budgeting. I love seeing that because everyone watching YouTube is different. We have different expectations, we have different lifestyles, we have different wants and needs, and now you can get more diversity than there once was 
in the YouTube space and I think that's amazing. I think that that's incredible and it makes me so happy to see. Maybe my channel doesn't work for you. Maybe you're someone who you also love buying new makeup and you want to see those reviews. There's so many channels out there for you. So many amazing, amazing channels that work so hard and put so much energy and their own money into their channels to consistently bring you the new reviews. Amazing. Maybe you're someone who doesn't want to see anything about new makeup and maybe you're someone who you're coming to YouTube for a completely different reason. I know that you're going to find channels that would make more sense for you to watch and I love that those options are available now. I just think that it is great and I'm really proud for the people who have you know kind of pioneered a, a change. I mean even going back to Kimberly Clark and the anti-haul and the consumerism and thinking about products more, that's amazing. I love that there's just so much different content these days, you know? Again, when I came on, it was like all about the new makeup and it was all about the tutorials. I love that there's so many different things that you can now watch within the beauty community on YouTube. New people inspire me every single day. I love finding new channels. Um, I think that it's amazing and I think everyone can succeed no matter what it is that you are focusing on, no matter what it is that you want your platform to be or your niche to be. I think so many people can succeed on YouTube and that makes me so happy. Seven is, do you feel compelled to buy something when you see it in someone else's collection? I mean, yeah, there's definitely times and that kind of goes back to like the FOMO question for me too. And yeah, I totally do. But you know, I mean, such as life is, do you buy more during the holidays? I don't think so. Um, again, I don't have like significant tracking to back me up there, but a lot of times during the holidays, I'm not thinking about myself. I guess I'll say, yes, I buy more during the holidays, but not for me. I really love gifting for other people. It's a lot of fun for me. Uh, I'm going to use the Delinquent Eyeliner from Urban Decay. It is a purple in the waterline. Uh, so I like to... I don't know, I really like to put a lot of thought into the gifts I give. I'm really kind of over just like, just buying gifts to buy gifts. We have so many kids in our family. Mitch and I are an aunt and uncle to 10 kids. And it felt like for a while we were just buying just like random toys and stuff that like the kids don't even really want. We're just buying them because we felt this pressure of like we have to buy. And we're really trying to make a conscious effort to not fall into that because it just seems again it just goes back to it just seems wasteful um and so we tried to change up our habits and what it is that we're buying and how we can make sure we're we're getting family or friends things that they actually want need will use will appreciate and and all of that Mix the two mats on the sigma e33 and put them into my lower lash line so uh, yeah, I would say that I buy more during the holidays, but not for myself, for other people. And that's also an area in life that I've tried to get a little bit better at um, purchasing wisely. <laughs> Nine is, have you ever hidden a makeup purchase from a friends or family? Um, I don't know if I've ever, like, hidden the fact that I've bought makeup. Like, I've never... I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I've hidden anything. Um... Like, I felt like I was buying too much, but I was trying to do the thing of just, like, justifying it to no end. Like, oh, I need it. Or, you know, this could bring this many views, which could equal money. Like, it's worth it that way. Add a little bit of the kind of more pinky shimmer as an inner corner highlight. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, and then to finish off the eyes, I also have a mascara from Koki Cosmetics. This is the Volume and Length Mascara. So I'm going to go ahead and try this one for the first time too. So that is what the wand looks like. I'm going to go ahead and do a second coat also. Wait, I have the mascara added to these lashes over here. I think it helps give them a little bit of length. I don't know if I notice a ton for volume, but I can notice that they're a little bit more lengthened. Okay, so that finishes off the eyes. Definitely still really enjoying that purple. Um, I wish the mascara did maybe a little bit more for volume too because I feel like especially with like such the intense purple I wish my lashes matched the intensity just a little bit but I'm gonna go ahead and still rock it. I thought about maybe putting falsies on but I think I'm still just gonna 
go ahead and wreck this. So I'm going to finish off with some highlighter. I'm going to use this one from Jaclyn Cosmetics. This is the Bomb Highlight. I've been testing this one out to get a review for it. I'm not a huge fan of loose powder, but we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, and then we are on to question number 10. Do you have more than 10 products in your collection that you have not used in over a month? Yes. 11 is, have you ever been pressured to purchase something you could not afford or did not need? Yeah. So I think I mentioned that every single week in my Will I Buy It video, I get a comment from somebody saying that I don't buy enough or, you know, that I'm boring. This highlight is very intense. I'm trying to do it very lightly here. Um, you know, or just like different comments like that. And I think back to the past when, you know, I was still kind of like trying to figure out my footing on YouTube and, and all of that. I so easily could succumb to the peer pressure of those types of comments. And I'm glad that, you know, like I kind of think I had to hit the rock bottom of literally spending my entire savings account on makeup <laughs> to be able to get myself out of that mindset. Then last week... I just had a comment come in on YouTube talking about how I'm boring, I'm never gonna succeed. Um, you know, listed off a couple other YouTubers that have amazing channels, like list, like my friends, um, listed off their channels and they're so successful because they review new makeup and I'm never going to succeed, I never haul anything. And before I could see that comment, someone wrote in and said, like, you know, she just posted a haul a few days ago. Like, she just posted a Sephora haul and, you know, ha bought a new eyeshadow palette and these things. And this original person commented back and was like, yeah, but that haul was tiny and boring. And because I said that I spent my $25 Rouge reward at Sephora on the Natasha Denona Glam palette, which is $25, that that purchase doesn't count. And I was like, what? I, to get that rouge reward, I spent thousands of dollars on makeup at Sephora. Like, what do you mean that purchase doesn't count? It made me feel so bad about myself. And then I get on Twitter and I see one of my friends, Jen Loves Reviews, she had a comment from someone saying that in one of her like 2019 wrap up videos, she showed too much PR and it needed to be products that she bought. And I'm like, why is this this expectation on YouTubers that because we get something in PR, our opinions don't matter? Why is something given in PR not okay? Something that we buy on sale, not okay. Something we buy in a rouge reward, not okay. What expectations are we having on YouTubers these days to try to pressure people to buy items that they really don't want to buy or they really don't need just to provide free content for viewers? to be able to provide free content for viewers to help you decide if you should spend your money on that product. It doesn't make sense to me. Being a YouTuber is a job, but it's not a job in the sense of we get benefits, we get health insurance, we get paid time off. We don't have a, a petty fund account for if a camera breaks and we need to go out and buy a new camera. That's we are we are doing these channels ourselves. We are financing these channels ourselves. I feel worried when I I get so many comments from people saying, I'm thinking about starting a YouTube channel, but I'm worried I can't afford it. But do you, do you know how many times I've had people ask me if I think that they should get the Ulta or the Sephora credit card to help finance their YouTube channel? So often. And I just it just breaks my heart because that's what people see. That's what we that's what we see in the comments. That's what we see being so pressured is to buy and to buy and to buy. Because I had a comment come in, I think it was on Instagram. Um, someone DM'd me and said that sometimes she feels like YouTubers are like animals in a zoo. That's how she compared us. We're animals in a zoo. We're here to perform tricks for other people. We're here for other people's benefit, to make other people happy, to make other people smile. That's how she compared YouTubers. And that really struck a chord with me because that's how I feel. I feel like sometimes there's people watching me on their screen that are like, dance, monkey, dance. And they just want me to do things for their benefit. It doesn't matter that I'm a person. It doesn't matter that I'm a 32-year-old woman that has struggled in her life to get to where she is. There's people that don't care to see that. There's people that don't care to get to know the person behind the makeup. But try to remember that we're humans and that we're all probably just trying to do our best. I know that that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to do my best. But yes, I feel pressured 
especially every single week on a Wednesday to buy more makeup, to buy more makeup that I don't want, to buy more makeup that I don't need because I'm trying to make someone else happy. I'm gonna finish off with my lip combo. I'm gonna use the Beeper Lip Liner from ColourPop and then the BRB Lip Gloss from Ofra. I used this last week, but I really love this lip gloss and I really wanna use it again. All right, so there is my lip combo and I'm loving it. Okay, we just have two more questions left. One is, do you purchase makeup for collector reasons? I don't really feel that pull kind of goes back to the limited edition. Like, there's a lot of things that I like, but I don't feel this urge to, like, collect them all. And I'm thinking a lot about palettes. You know, I, I know when the when ColourPop was putting up their monochromatic palettes, I got a lot of comments from people saying, like, I want to make sure I have all of them. I want the whole collection. And I didn't really feel that way. Um, even, like, Anastasia palettes, like, I like a lot of them and I've purchased a lot of them. But if there's a palette that doesn't call to me, I don't want to buy it just to have it as part of like a collection does that make sense so I, I would say no and number 13 the final question is in your makeup journey have you become less or more consumeristic well that's a great question and I mean I feel like from my answers that I've given and kind of flashing back to the past and where I am now I feel like after starting YouTube I definitely got more I feel like again kind of over time hitting rock bottom like I mentioned in my mindset and makeup video that I'll link once I hit that point that's when I started to become less consumeristic and trying to focus more on the value of what it is I'm buying making sure I'm buying products that I really really want that I'm really uh, you know really interested in and being able to talk myself out of it more that is question number 13 that is the end of the beauty consumer tag <sighs> okay like I knew all of the questions I looked at all the questions ahead of time but once again something about sitting down in front of a camera and turning it on and just kind of the act of putting on makeup while talking I truly feel like I'm talking to friends sometimes I truly wish I didn't have that when it came to YouTube I wish I could be a little bit more guarded I wish I could be a little bit like keep personal items a little bit closer to me because when you put out stuff about your personal life it gives more people ammunition to be angry with you or to make their own conclusions or judgments about you but at the same time this is kind of always who i've been i've been in social media for going on 11 years now you know trying to be very open about my mistakes and when i go through hard times and when i go through good times and and all of that so i really hope that you took something away from this tag thank you so much to 90s love child for coming up with such amazing questions i hope that you enjoyed it i hope that you took something away i hope i wasn't too harsh at any point in this video the thing that i used will be linked in my description box and down below if you are curious about anything again thank you so much to hellofresh for sponsoring this video more information on that will also be in my description box but a th big thank you to them for working with me on this video again thank you to 90s love child for coming up with this really fun tag uh other than that though if you guys did enjoy this video <laughs> i hope that you'll give it a thumbs up i hope that you also consider subscribing before you go and i will see you in my next video bye